We're chatting with Blake Shelton about his brand new album, Body Language, his 12th studio album. We're going to be catching up about his latest single, Minimum Wage, and about the kind of country songs he loves to cut. Is it different making music 12 albums and 20 years in than it was when you were like recording Austin and, and just starting? When I was 24, which I, was, I think that's how old I was when, I, when my first album came out. You know, back then I, I was, I felt like I had so much to prove to people and, you know, and I wanted to be the, the guy that, that says this and, and, and says that. And, and, and now that I'm almost 45, uh, I'm, I'm not that kind of person anymore. I feel like I've, I've, people pretty much know everything about me that probably way more than they ever cared to know. <laughs> and, and I don't really have a, a, a thing to, to say anymore. I don't really have a, a message I'm trying to get out to people. I, the truth is, I, I'm just, I love country music and I love a, a, a great country lyric and a, and, a, and a great country melody. And I just want to record a bunch of those songs. That, that's, the, that's as honest as I can be with you about it. I want to talk about the title track. I'd love to hear you tell the story um, about the Swan Brothers and how this song came to you. Man, you know, I, I've tried to, best I can, you know, continue to have a relationship with those guys. Uh, not only, obviously, it's easy to have a, a friendship relationship with them, but, uh, you know, a not a coach relationship with them because who am I to, to say something like that? But I've, I've tried to, to, to keep a strong uh, bond with those guys from the standpoint of, of, of helping them when I can and, and letting them bounce ideas off of me and just being a, just being a shoulder for them to lean on when it, when it's, when it's that time as far as career advice and stuff. And, 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 uh, and I mean, I try to, you know, include them on, on you know things that i have happening whether it's at an old red or whatever I, you know i mean they're just so unbelievably talented and but, but beyond that just great guys and so charismatic and I, i'm telling you I, these guys are going to be stars i don't know when or how it's going to happen these, these guys are just so talented and they're so entertaining but anyway uh you know, they're, they're constantly sending me music over the years. Like, what do you think about this song? And we're thinking about doing an EP. Would you put this song or that song on it? You know, it's been happening for for eight years now since uh, since I met the Swan Brothers. We've had this this relationship. And they finally uh, sent a song over that it was like, well, uh, I don't think you should put that on your EP because I, I actually want that one. <laughs> <laughs> and so that's kind of how it came about, you know. It, it actually came through Scott Hendricks the first time I heard it, and 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 I just loved the song. And, and and he said that they had sent it to him just trying to get feedback. And I was like, "Hey, well, tell them the feedback is that I want that thing, you know." And and so we went in, and I really just tried to 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 do the best I could at making my version of that song sound just like what they had created because. They did. They really nailed the track. They nailed the personality of it, and and the fact that, you know, the first line of the song is, is I'm catching every third word. I'm I'm about half deaf anyway, so that works perfectly for me. <laughs> <laughs> they're too they're too young to be deaf. So, but you know, they're actually on the record singing all the backgrounds, and and uh, uh, you know, I wanted it to not just be a cut for them. I wanted to to feature them. Uh, on the record too and, and and hopefully they get even more mileage out of that also well it's a great song it also it's just fun i don't know there's something really fresh about the way like the phrasing of body language in in there is really hooky and feels amazing and i mean i, I love that as a choice you know for the title track and and it you know it deserved to be on the record yeah i just feel like it's and also for for me also it just sounds like something I, that I've never recorded before. And, and we know you and I both know that, you know, country music has definitely moved into a, uh, actually under the umbrella of country music. I feel like there's all these di other different lanes and there's definitely a pop uh, lane and there's um, like a, like a hip hop type country lane. And then there's this, the soulful Stapleton thing. And then, 
the Luke Combs, like more nineties, traditional sounding country. There's all these lanes and, and I don't really know where body language even fits in those lanes because it, it almost sounds more like an eighties, like an eighties rock sounding track. And, and it's not something like I had ever done before. And, and that man, when you've been doing it as long as I have, you, you're kind of running out of new, new territory <laughs> to explore. So anytime that I get a chance, I, I'm always excited to get something that sounds like nothing else I've done. Um, well, I think I love I love it. I think it's fun to see that side of you. And I also think melodically, this is an interesting album. I credit that. I, to be honest with you, I got to give Scott Hendricks all the credit on that because he's the one that really, you know, he's he's really the driving force behind, you know, anything I do when it comes to making records. And and he's always because because, you know, if it was up to me, I would I would probably make a an Earl Thomas Conley tribute album you know because uh that's just you know where my brain lives you know and he's always the one that pushes me to go no man i know you like that song but man you've got like you've cut like five songs that sound just like that man let's do something different what just try it you know he's always pushing me and so i give all of that credit to scott and 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 i will say you know and it's not until i actually get in there and i start working on things that that you know i'll end up falling in love with them i mean honestly austin was was that way for me like I, to me when i recorded uh, when i first heard austin i thought it was just super cheesy and i was just like what what For god this guy's so desperate like he, let it go dude like it's been a year you're still putting this answer machine message on it. what are you doing you know and, and so i luckily back then i had bobby braddock and debbie zavinson in my ear going listen man you need to you need to just live with this song, work on it. And, and I was just so stupid, you know, I, I did. And, and, and thank God they stayed on me about that because otherwise, you know, uh, I wouldn't be sitting here talking to you 20 years later, probably, you know, man, that's funny. It's funny how sometimes a song, sometimes a song grabs you immediately. And sometimes it you have to live with it. I think. I mean, were there any were there any on this record that had to grow on you, and then have kind of stood the test of time as you've been thinking about baking a new project? You know, Bible verses was was one for me, and I will I won't say that I, I that it was that hard to get over the hump, but that that song is is so honest and and so in, intense in, in ways that and, and so personal in, in ways when you sing it because you're going, oh my God, I'm telling everybody that. You know, I'm really not always everything I want to be, you know, but I think if we're being honest as as recording artists, as human beings, it, you, you got to go there. You know what I mean? Because I think what I've found with the limited amount of people that have heard Bible verses, so many people come to me and they go, oh, my God, man, that's my song. Like I wake up every night I go to bed. I'm uh, you know, I, I pray that I'm a that I'm, I'm a better person tomorrow, you know, and. And that song just says it to me, you know, and it's like sometimes I just feel like I'm I'm never going to measure up to what, you know, God expects me to be, to be. Amen. Let's wrap, if we could, by talking about the single, talking about minimum wage. I feel like I got it when I got to see you perform it on the ACM stage. It was like, oh, yeah. oh it's going to be amazing live. The energy is just so fun. So yeah. I'd love to hear about that. I'd love to hear about like what that it was even like to kind of take the stage and get to do that in that setting. You know, what's funny is you, you saying that, um, is the, the, the number one reason I recorded that song is because I thought how fun it would be to do it live. And, and one step beyond that is I thought it would be a great show opener because it's got that super long intro that kind of builds and, I was like, oh, my God, I can see some fog on the stage. And I come up on one of those stupid elevators or whatever. Like You have all these these little images in your mind of how you're going to do it, you know. And so that was really the, the the thing that pushed me over the edge to record the song. And then once we had it recorded, it's like, well, now we got it. Now I got to put it out. I mean, we got to have a new show opener. So that's kind of, that's kind of the, the inspiration as far as re recording the song. You've been on a lot of stages. Road life is wearisome. Um, even when you're doing it, you know, in the luxury of, you know, being a, 
a, you know, a superstar. But does that has that ever lost its luster, like getting out, standing in front of people, playing the songs? Or is that the fuel? It it did lose its luster uh, for a minute there, about 2012 or something. That's when, uh, you know, we were, I was just starting. We, we went to two seasons of The Voice. The Voice was a brand new show and I was touring full time as, or as much as I could. And it was just, it became too much. It was just, it was too much for me personally. I mean, there was never a, day off it was just crazy and i started resenting uh, you know touring a little bit i was like oh my god what am, what is the point what are we doing you know this is just i'm not enjoying it anymore you know and and so we did the hardest thing probably for any country artist and and or manager or booking agency you could ever do is went you know we got to we got to pull back as as much as we possibly can and 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 since about 2013 i probably play i don't know 25 shows a year and and that's obviously not very many for for any artist that is trying to maintain that touring you know profile but what it has done is it's it's kept me so excited about when i go on stage now because it's been a month half the time with, since i've been on the stage and, and until we get to that tour and the tours are exciting because I'm not rolling into them, burn out from, from the tour that just ended like you do amphitheaters and then you go into arenas. and It's just that one moment that we have a year. It's like, hey, we get to go be country stars this month. And it's so exciting, you know, and it's something that I look forward to. I really do. 